Hello and welcome to Rips Kits. Um, just want to apologise for not having a video posted last week. My intentions were to do that, but unfortunately, I ended up with the flu, um, and I'm still just uh, getting over it now. Um, so, just wanted to yeah, apologise for, for nothing being there. Um, in the meantime, the week before that, I ordered a load of kits to add to my stash, and I want to share some of those with you now. And one of them I'm going to enter into the hashtag under 1000 group build, which is hosted by Robert Time Machine Scale Models and Mike at Mike's Model. So, first up is a resin figure it's as it's a confederate artillery man a scale of 75 millimeters but he's an infantryman uh, you get all the base uh, obviously the weapons and stuff um, tell what see by the size of the box how little big it is um, let's get it out quickly and give you a quick look I haven't really had a look at it myself but so yeah there's your there's the base all, dot, all cast in resin um there's the rifle or the musket shall I say uh, it's a bit worse for wear on the end. With a bit of pay in that. Right. Like it can come in. Get it out. Um, there's the. There's the bayonet. Pictures on the end of the old musket there. Here's the main body. Get the light out of here for a sec. It's nicely, nicely cast. All his pouches and his water bottle. He's a uh, sergeant. Three stripes. Um, so yeah, he's is there somewhere like that then we've got a small little bit in here um the pouch for the back this is other arm his backpack with his bed roll There we go. Good old look at it. A nice tash on there. And a bit of a goatee beard. But yeah. One. Second one is another resin model. This is a Coldstream Gar from Waterloo, eighteen fifteen. CGS Millie figures and this is in one ninth scale, so slightly bigger than that one. The printed instructions. There's quite a bit to this. It's got metal, a white metal bay in it. I'm not going to get this all this stuff out because it'll take too long to put it all back in again, unfortunately. Uh, in this bag, we've got straps, uh, his hand, which is Digging into his uh, cartridge box. Got the plume for his Shaco. Uh, that's a knapsack. We've got the water bottle. This is the stand and that go on a wooden plinth. I think there's another bag. Right, 
that's the, his arms. Here we've got two types of head. One is this one is the covered Shaco. And this is the Shaco with the cold streams guards. Uh oh edge on it. Both is identical. Now for some other reason I've got a spare head in there, so if I mess up that head I've got another one to work with. Arms and all three of those heads back in the bag out of the way. All nicely cast. And what we've got in this bag. We have his backpack. And sneeze. Sorry, back to sneeze. Um his backpack with his uh sleeping his roll, bed roll. And in here we have the body. Very nicely cast. Let me uh, see if I can get this light down a bit, whether it makes a difference or not. Not really. Uh, that's all nicely cast. And then finally, right at the bottom, we've got a piece of silver little strip I'm wondering if that's for the um excuse me to be used for the uh, rifle sling tip possibly but right at the very bottom we have the musket which has got warpage in it so it's gonna have to be uh, heated out we have a piece of metal. Now this piece of metal is going to be made it from there to there because that then becomes a cleaning rod. Let's get right into the future. We got a Star Wars ATST. This is a um, second hand kit, somebody else's collection. Um, it was pre started. I've had to pull it apart. That's not part of the kit, but it's part of a Star Wars kit. So it has been pre started in there. Um, I've pulled it apart so I can actually. Do my own thing with that. I'm not going to go through that. Um, there is one piece missing, which I was quite disappointed about. This should <clears throat> what should be in there? In that brown piece of sprue is a Chewbacca Dragon Kit. The one six scale British whale bike, paratrooper bike. Uh, obviously you don't get the figure, you just get the bike. Being 1-6 scale, it will have a one twelve scale figure associated with it. Now these are pretty damn good uh, kits to build, even though the instructions are pretty damn rubbish. So you've got folding handlebars, you've got a realistic saddle that can be height adjusted. You've got the dedicated uh, detailed two-stroke engine, fuel tanks. This isn't started, so then I'm going to look forward to doing that. But yeah, as you see, that's basically what you get in the kit: cut of rubber tires, and uh, the chain is a bit of rubber, two-piece um, front and real wheels. This is just a bag of everything. I'm not going to get it out of the bag. Um, I believe that's the exhaust system. There's part of the engine there. Loads and loads of bits. There's a saddle. 
Um, just a prime. There's the fuel tanks. Some more of the engine there. There's another piece of the engine with a gearbox. Uh, so that's pretty. It's going to look pretty cool. Uh, we've got metal. Piece of metal. I think that's a stand. Here's the uh, usual dragon instructions. So that's a little bit more helpful than the next one that's going to show you. So this should build up into a nice looking, nice looking kit. And we have the one six scale German MG forty two with tripod. This is the unbuilt kit. You've, it's the heavy duty tripod for the MG forty two. You've got an ammo belt, two ammo drums. You can put a sling on the um, gun. The bipod folds. You can open it up and thread the um, ammo belt through. You've got a cocking handle on the side there so you can cock the gun. And you've got interchangeable um, barrel that can be removed from the gun. There's some more of the uh, heavy duty uh, machine gun tripod itself. Now I'm going to let you into a little secret. I've already got one of these kits and I built it a long time ago. It's a little bit nap now, so I bought another one to replace it. So there's your machine gun. Um, Your drums. There's your um, bipod for the front. They give you. You get the spanner in the kit. You get the oil container in the kit. You get the anti-aircraft sight in the kit. All of this sort of stuff around here is for the tripod. You see the size of it. That's length of the the gun here's your muzzle on the end there's your ammo uh, the mach there's the machine part inside there's firing pin um there's the rest of the other side of the gun sorry I'm a bit mind blown with this because uh my brain is not working very well. Drilled out two two machine gun barrels. Sorry, this is taking a long time, guys. I will get down to it all. Everything in there is basically to do with the stand, the optical sights. They go up and down. Uh, leather pads, etc. All of that is uh, the tripod. <coughs> Here's your tripod. It's got adjustable legs. You got a height height adjustment and range adjustment decal. Back in the bag. Here's a remainder of tripods. You've got two types of uh, heavy duty tripod stand in here. One is MG42, which is this one, I believe, and this one is the MG34. Again, there's your legs, or one of the legs for the, uh, the, that's the rear, these two at the front. It all folds down as well, the whole tripod folds down to carry in. These are the straps for, one for the gun and one for the, uh, for the tripod. There's your machine gun built. Now this is the important part. This is all the tubes and the springs and the fittings and the buckles and everything for cocking the gun and moving the bits on the legs. And again, 
single sheet instructions but this one is definitely not very clear at all I can remember this from the last time I put it together but these are the bits that you um, got to put your spring in it allows you to re uh, raise or lower the front leg uh, all of this all moves up and down I want to get it all together you, um, you'll see it all anyway so you fire in pin inside the gun it's a very good kit contribution to the ad hashtag under 1000 GB the box is crap it's again it's a second and kit this is a water, this water damaged box um, but the kit is untouched never been started everything is in there and you find the detailed uh, cowlings in here I'm making a hash of this and I'm getting all this out I do apologize and then made it a bit hard. Let's do it that way. We have three canopies. All very, very clear. The only the only horrible thing about these is where they've been put on these screws. You can't see it through the bag. But there's a bloody seam line that goes right the way down the centre of each one of those. Which is absolutely annoying. There's the rest of your canopy pieces and uh, your lights and stuff. Um, your clear parts for your clear parts for you. You've got two types of cockpit dashboard, dashboard. Some pins of varying sizes. So we've got to be careful when we open that one up. It's a bag of magnets. Tiny little magnets and big magnets. There, those are for open cowling, so you can see the front, see the engine, or when you put it on its stand, its flight stand, you've got magnets that help it stay. The bits and pieces stay on the bottom. You have to look after the other bits. Two rubber tires. Photo etch. Two lots of photo etch. More screwdriver and grommets. Another grommet and some nuts and screws. So that's what's in that one. Like I said, it's not been touched. I missed anything off the bag. Just wanted to show you this because um, There's your top and bottom wings. Very nicely detailed kit, I must say. Now I've got to try and remember how it all goes back in the box again as well. Uh, on here you've got part of the prop. Um, got air, air rams for underneath. All part of the air rams and that for underneath. This side we've got two lots, two different types of exhausts. Lots of wiring looms, the cockpit, ammunition belts here, ammunition belts there, gun trays, two figures. Pilot standing, pilot in the cockpit. Then you've got flaps, carriage, um, gun bay covers. Same on that side. This is cockpit with two types of cockpit. You get the early cockpit and the late cockpit. 
it all, it's all based off of that one piece of the kit so there's bits and pieces on like here for this little bit that you have to cut off if you're using the later the later version of the D on this route we have the two sides plus t one of the tail fins because you've got one of them there's the other fins with all the other flaps and things one of these is the that one's the early this is the early type and that's the later type the, the, the way you can identify that is because you've got this fillet which runs across here you can see it here right the early type doesn't have that 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 increases stability in the aircraft as you got into the war a lot later into the war i'm going to lose all this lot on the floor in a sec detailed engine let's go parts of the engine wing spars that's all the wheel wells you know they raised or lowered and then you've got early drop tanks and late drop tanks and the stand now you let's have a price handle where's the decal where's the decal there's no decals i do have decals that i do have decals this is going to be a pain in the bum Oh, back in there somewhere. There we go. There we go. All went back in. So you get this free folder. Oh, excuse me. That's the main aircraft. You see that fillet on the back? This is Blondie from the um, 344th fighter wing, I think it is. This is what's in the old gobbledy gook here. There she is. There's the colour chart. The blondie. Three thirty four fighter squadron full fighter group. This will be the one that I'm doing. Um I wanted to do dearly I wanted to do a red tail. The old Tusk Tuskegee's red towel, but getting decals for a 130 second version is not impossible. And those that I have seen, very few and far between, are very expensive. And then you've got a very expensive um, postal charge on top of it. One site was asking for £50 for a set of decals. 11 pounds for carriage i mean what the hell how it's ex how ex stupidly ex extortionate is that so this is the um plan those what other aircraft you can get in that one in the 130 second scale series i'm sure there's more to it now than that and here you get a nice little Click which opens up it's in Japanese and English, so you get a run through of the variants, the engine configuration for the variants. We all know that the original was powered by the Allison engine, which was very underperformed. Um, uh, when the British bought some Mustangs, they put a Merlin engine in it. <clears throat> and when they sent it back with Merlins to uh, America, you updated it even more and gave it a supercharger. And that's how it became the very best of the, uh, in my opinion, the fighters. So. <clears throat> In there gives you all the variants 
and the engines. So this is the Allison V V1710 and then you pack a Merlin V1650. Here is the, like I was saying earlier, the two variants with or without fin. So that's early, that's late, early and late drop tanks. And there's all your marks with, <coughs> excuse me, as you can see with your different variations through the marks or what they, what they are. So that's, that's the early one at the time. Uh, difference then from that one is an ex a slightly extended nose with different machine port, machine gun in the front, um, bulletproof canopy, then you've got the 51A where the machine guns underneath were omitted, then you've got the Mustang 10 which elongated the nose, then you've got the B and C with a further elongated nose and the, the um, that's when it was equipped with the Packard Merlin engine and the extra scoop on the bottom that's when the British had it changed the canopy so they had all round vision uh, there's 51D with different canopy 51K has got a dorsal fillet and a different prop uh, that's the aero products propeller and then you've got cameras fitted for the Diva uh, F6D and the 51D is basically some of those bits all in one here's pictures of the actual museum piece so that's that the decals are in here um, I'm not going to get them out but you've got canopy masks in there as well this Rob and Mike is going to be my entry into the hashtag under 1000 group build so thank you for watching I appreciate all you guys all you subscribers, all you new subscribers, my old subscribers, appreciate you all. I noticed that YouTube is having one of its things again as far as subscriptions. I lost a couple of subscriptions uh, over the last week, so if you have subscribed, to my channel please check your subscription levels if it's if you've become unsubscribed please re, please resubscribe um i can certainly do with the subscriptions but anyway thank you for watching catch you in the next one have a good weekend see you soon